everyone and welcome to WhitneyWyatt.com. I'm Whitney. And I'm Wyatt. And today we're going to talk to a friend of mine, Heather Morelli, who has had a very scary experience with DVT, which is deep vein thrombosis. Now, I've heard about DVT, you know, due to prolonged inactivity, like being on an airplane for a long haul flight. But in Heather's case, this was different. So we're going to hear her story. I've really never heard about it before. I mean, I've heard that on airplane flights, you're supposed to move around so that your legs don't get numb and fall asleep, but I don't know much about it, so I'm very curious to talk to her as well. Start by telling us your story. I had a pain in my calf about a day after I got off a plane, and for a whole week I thought I had pulled a muscle or something, um, and played soccer on it four times, and eventually started really bothering me, woke me up in the middle of the night on Sunday night, and it was way too much pain, so I'm like, I need to go see a doctor. So I went to go see my primary care physician, uh, that afternoon and I said, I have a pain in my calf, it's been moving down my leg, um, and I don't know what's going on. And he said, hmm, well, let's get that checked out. And then I happened to mention I also have shortness of breath, and that made him pause. And I was like, okay, why are we pausing here? So I went and got an ultrasound on my leg, and they found a vein in my leg. And um, the ultrasound started at 415, 445. They told me you have a clot in your leg. By 510, they had injected me with my first shot of Lovenox, which is a blood thinning medication. Um, when I had told them about my shortness of breath, they also gave pause and they said, well, you need to go get checked out. So where I went to go get checked out was right next door to the ER. So I walked myself to the ER and uh, got admitted and they did a CAT scan. And by 10 o'clock that evening, they admitted me to the hospital with the DVT in my leg and bilateral pulmonary emboli in my lungs. Whoa. It was pretty much covered. Um, and the ER doc came in and said, I don't know why you're not sicker than you already are. You're covered. And that's oh where gosh. I broke down crying. They didn't really do anything for me while I was in the hospital. Um, took blood thinning medication and they just monitored me and that was it. And then they released me from the hospital and they said, okay, take this for six months, come back and check up on your leg and wear a compression stocking. Speaking of compression stockings, are you still wearing your compression stockings? I am. Um, my, uh, the vein doc that I go to, he pretty much said that he recommends I wear it for the rest of my life. Um, there are many different varieties of compression yes. stockings, actually. And, and women who've been pregnant and have had pain in their legs, they know about compression stockings. If you have varicose veins, you know about compression stockings if you're diabetic. So more, a lot of people wear compression stockings, whether you know it or not. Um, and what it does is it starts with um, compression, more compression down at the ankle, and as it works up, it kind of gets a little bit less and less because it helps just flow the blood back up. It helps the blood fight gravity. How did you even get DVT? Do you know how that happened? They don't know. I had a variety of factors playing into it. One was the plane flight. Two, I had a few um, bruises on my left leg, um, serious bruises from playing soccer all below my knee. Um, I also was on birth control pills. So um, estrogen is definitely an, uh, a factor in um, increasing your risk of clotting. And it's actually in the literature you get. Um, you just never pay attention to it. Um, and I also tested positive for a genetic factor called prothrombin 2210. It's also known as the factor two portion. Um, and then lastly, I don't drink a lot of fluids. Where can you go for support and information if you find out that you are diagnosed with DVT? There's all sorts of things online about what it is, what are the symptoms, and what are the treatments, but there is absolutely nothing out there that I could find that said, and here's what you should expect while you're recovering. And so that's why I went and I joined the support group because it was really scary for the first four weeks. I had lots of thoughts about dying. I had a few doctors upon diagnosis say, we saved a life here tonight. You know, you really could have, who knows if you would have waited longer. So it was a really scary time and I had all sorts of things running through my head and I was hyper aware of everything that was happening in my body. And I'm a person who never paid attention to what my body was doing. And, and doctors really can't give you, well, if you had this size of clot, it'll take you this long to recover and here's what you could expect. Because with, with a DVT and a PE, wh how, what people go through is so wide and varied that there is no good documentation about here's what you expect. But what I found with this online support group, it's actually called dailystrength.org, um, and, it's, and it's a support group for all sorts of health issues. So not just PE or DVT, but anything people have di been diagnosed with and they just need the support of somebody else who's going through it or a family member. It, it really helped me a lot because I was able to read women's stories who had gone before me and find out, oh wow, yeah, that's exactly what I'm going through. Okay, I feel like 
okay, nothing bad is happening right now. And I found that it's come full circle. Now that I am five months post being diagnosed, I know what the gals who are now on there who just been diagnosed two, three weeks into it, what they're going through and how I'm able to give them the support that they need to say, what you're going through is exactly what I went through. And similarly, when I needed that, that's also what I got. Wow, so that was pretty fascinating, I think. I mean, I knew a little bit about DBT, but I think Heather has shed more light on it because it's a, a topic that I think we should all be aware of. Yeah, I think so too. And I've got to go back and look at my birth control pills. I meant to bring them today to read that fine print. I want to know more about this, but also there might be some other things there. Now that I know my family history, which I didn't know many years ago when I started taking them, I want to look at that stuff. We take that for granted, I think. I think we do. I know I Not take to... it for granted. We ignore it. Well, yeah, <laughs> seriously. I think I, you know, I, when I get medication, I tend to just ignore most of what's on there because I'm like, I'm healthy and I'm under a certain age and such. Me but too. you never know what happens. No, I know. But she's doing great. I'm so glad that she found a support system and she's asking all these questions. Sounds like she has really good doctors and her attitude is fantastic. Yeah. I would be freaked out if I found out I had blood clots in my lungs. Yeah. So scary. That, that, you know, it was pretty much a near-death experience is what she said. Mm -hmm. I remember her telling me about that time, you know, and like when she was going through it and it was not something that I would hope for anybody to go no, through. No, no. I'm really glad we had her on the show. It's yeah. good information. Me too. And we hope you learned a little bit today, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.